Good morning, Randy Pischel here, also known as Star Thinker. Um, today I'd like to talk about my solve. And I know I've been teasing about it, I've been saying how perfect it is. Um, I even found two references in the book that almost name the name. <laughs> and so I'm kind of excited about it. So I decided, like, to hell with it, I'm going to break down, I'm going to show my solve, and then I decided that I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about my solve. If you're really good with Google, um, I'm sure you can find it, because like I said, I am not the first person to come up with this. Um, other people have come up with this, they've gone to the area, they've not found nothing. And But I'm going to talk about it and how I found it and everything. But first... Um, when I made my last couple of videos, I, I talked about um, some of the things I, I collect, you know, I, I collect giraffes. And um, I do collect something else besides giraffes, but um, someone asked me about my giraffe collection. So I thought I would go through that first, and then I'll go through my solve. So um, let me... Let me grab my camera here, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna like stitch the video together. I'm not very good at video editing, um, but I will tell you this: that my plant, you know, I work. People say, "Oh, I work at a door factory," but they don't understand. It's a huge industrial complex that makes doors, and it's so big that we have a shop, and like the job of this shop is to make signs. You know, we're a big enough factory that we have people hired, and a shop that just makes signs all day long. And you can imagine, you know, how big is this place that all they do is make signs. Um, but, you know, they have these, you can take, like, the reflective signs you see on the highway, and they, there's a laser that will etch out the letters on this, so, like, the sign is reflective and then the letters aren't. And then, of course, they have vinyl. They don't just have vinyl cutters that cut out the letters of all different shapes and sizes, but they got this big wall of all different color vinyls. And then they got, you know, the big you know, the big HP plot printers and plotters and, um, you know, the full spectrum color printers and stuff. And they do little things, you know, they print all the hazard and warning signs, but they do like the road signs in front of our building that say, you know, here's where trucks need to pull in and here's where cars need to pull in. They make those signs too. And they're just huge. Um, so I work nights and I work alone in the office building. Uh, the, there is a third shift that, uh, runs our frame productions we do make like twice as many frames as doors because our steel doors they're fireproof and um but we do make frames for wood doors but we don't make wood doors anymore we sold off all our wood door uh factories uh but we still make the frames for the wood doors so we make about twice as many frames as we do actual doors um but i mean it's a huge huge place and i think i did a video the other day I was asked to take it down, so it's not there anywhere. But where I drove through, I rode through the plant, and I didn't point out anything. Apparently, my audio didn't work when I drove through the plant. But um, well, you can hear me breathing, and I was going to do audio later, but I screwed up the video. But um, I thought, you know what? I'll go. I got all this stuff. I did print out a big plot, you know, giant map. Um, the poem and the map. There was a vector graphic uh, copy of this online. I, I did make that um i haven't brought it home yet i don't know where to put it because I, I live in such a small tiny place but anyway i'm going to go ahead and show you my giraffe collection and then i'm going to show you my solve so just starting out um this giraffe here i've talked about before um this is the one i found in the desert and like of all things and it's kind of a like a paper mache giraffe it's really light uh if you look really close you can see it's kind of paper mache you know, for someone who collects giraffes to be miles in the desert and to find that, it's just astronomical. <laughs> you know, I just don't believe I ever did that. But that's what I found. These are ones I purchased at uh, estate sales. The big tall one is a paper towel holder that a friend gave me. And, of course, his friends, you know, they know I collect giraffes and they give me things like uh, there's a giraffe salt and pepper shaker and the, there's a giraffe mug and when you drink out of it, there's a giraffe inside um, so these are various drafts that were given me. Some of these drafts I rescue, like this was at a garage sale or something, and so I buy them so people don't throw them away. The uh, wicker giraffe, I'm not 100% sure where I got that. Um, but those are some, 
and you'll see the Tinkerbell there. Um, I have 158 giraffes at my last count. Um, but also at my last count, I had 275 Tinkerbells. And that's a whole different story. Um, I collect Disney pins and there were other paraphernalia for Tinkerbell. Um, so this is these are the ones that I set up. I, I thought my cats would get into these, but so far they haven't. This is a, a drawing my friend made. Uh, she was in the hospital recovering, uh, and she drew this as part of, uh, you know, to keep herself occupied while she was recovering. And then right next to that, I had a Facebook friend who made animals. Um, she laser cut the wood, and then of course, as like a mosaic or a puzzle, you put the wood together. So there's all different kinds of wood in it, but this is my absolute favorite right here. I just love this one. And um, I don't know how many different types of wood there are in there, but it's just gorgeous and I just love it. Um, so it's hung very prominently. And then down here, this is, I, I used to collect old cameras, but I got rid of most of them. But I still have uh, a lot of Super 8 film. Uh, so I still have the projectors and stuff for them. I also collect mineral samples. Well, some of these I found myself. Some of these I collected. And next to my crystal ball here, this giraffe. And it's hard to see because, like, this is a, a glass curio cabinet. And like I said, everywhere I go, you'll see Tinkerbells. <laughs> so that's my Tinkerbell puzzle. And this also was a puzzle. Uh, but it's very special to me because it was given to me by a very close friend. Um, that crystal ball is one of the... <laughs> Believe it or not, that's one of the most expensive things I own. That's just, that, that has a whole history behind it, and I paid a frick ton of money for that thing. I also have things like there's a meteor sample there, and um, Peridot, and Rhodochrosite. I mean, there's just there's, I I just love minerals, and then of course some other things that that I've collected over the years. So back here along my back wall. You know, I got some stuffed animals. I got the really tall ones here. Um, but these are just some of the ones I've collected. Uh, that was a birthday present for my son. Uh, these two here, I won, kind of, well, I kind of won on a bet. I was at the Gem and Mineral Show in, in Denver, and it's like the biggest show. They have wholesalers there. Um, and these things, these are like the little animals you'll see. You'll see these in every gift shop and every touristy shop and they have all different kind of animals and this guy had like a refrigerator box full of these things and he was selling them by the pound and i stood there for about 20 minutes and i was looking for giraffes i couldn't find any and this is like early in the morning he was like the first booth i went to and the guy was like are you looking for something in particular because you've been here forever and um i said you know i see these things all the time and i never see a giraffe and he said oh i have there's probably a hundred giraffes in there. And I said, well, I'll tell you what. You pull out every giraffe, and I'll give you a buck for every giraffe you find. And I'll come back at later in the day. I came back about 3 o'clock, so he had a good six hours. And he had only found two. And, you know, this guy thought he was going to make a fortune off me. Uh, but uh, he only found two in the whole body. He said he did search all day long. And those were the only two he found. Um... More mineral. These are minerals that I've actually, except for the amethyst, these are actual minerals. Some quartz crystals, um, some fool's gold and, and stuff that I actually collected while hiking in Colorado. Um, I got little giraffes that were made to roll like dice. That one is actually made uh, by a kid in South Africa. I told that story in the last video. But like all over, and I could just keep looking and there's, I do have a bell collection. That one was given to me free by the zoo in Denver. Um, there was two of them, and I already paid for them, and the cashier was wrapping them up, and she dropped one, and it just shattered into a thousand pieces. That is glass. I don't know if you can tell. Um, but uh, she was mortified, and she was like, oh, let me give you your money back. And <laughs> she gave my money back, but let me keep the one that I had. And that's a very special one, too. We sponsored a uh, foreign exchange student. And she saw that I collected giraffes and she carved that for me. And then there's my brandy, uh, the ashes that I keep. But yeah, those are, those are just some. And like I said, everywhere I look, there's giraffes. And I have a lot more in storage. Um, 
There was one here I was going to show you, but I guess I can't find it right now. <laughs> Maybe it's still up. So that was fun. That was some of my giraffes. Uh, like I said, uh, I got about 158. And that includes, you know, the wall hangings. And I have giraffes, like refrigerator magnets and stuff. Um, but my my other collection... And that's there's a whole maybe I'll do another whole video on that one, but uh, there's a reason why I collect these things. Um, but anyway, that's a little distraction. But let me tell you about my solve now. I found my solve completely by accident because uh, back when I was and I still do it. I still go to cemeteries. I still look for the most remote, forgotten cemeteries I can find, and I photograph them. I look for um, special symbols. I have. Well, I, I transferred pictures from one drive to another because I realized I didn't have a backup on my drive. And um, there was something like 275,000 pictures in my cemetery collection. <laughs> so I do take a lot of pictures in cemeteries. Um, sometimes I document and I, when I go back, I compare damage in cemeteries and you can kind of see where damage is taking place. Um, I did report one cemetery because the lawnmower guy was just ramming stones with the lawn, like a riding mower. And um, he actually had bumpers on his lawnmower and he was ramming stones with them. And I documented all this and I sent it to the county and they took care of that. Um, so little things like that. Um, but as part of, and as part of my anger management back when I was having lots of stress issues, I would go to... It was kind of zen. I would go to Google Maps and I would zoom in, you know, on a very small area and I would just scan for about 20 miles in one direction looking for old cemeteries. And then I would go up just one screen worth and then come back 20 miles. And I would do that for hours, just going back and forth. And I got really good at spotting not just abandoned cemeteries, but cemeteries where the stones have been removed. And because there's places where farmers literally removed the stones and used the cemetery in their field um it happens and uh i would go to those locations and you know drive there and i would find the pile of stones like off to the side and then uh, i used to work with the mitchell county uh, pioneer cemetery project and we found lots of cemeteries that were like that uh, but uh I used that technique because I went to a, the area where it's very popular, you know, the Yellowstone, Montana, Wyoming, you know, that kind of area up there. Um, and I, I started using this technique <clears throat> and I came across a place where two rivers met. And the first, it jumped out at me because these rivers were two different colors. I thought, well, I wonder if that means one was hot, one was cold. So I zoomed out and sure enough, one was fed by some geysers or some springs and... I, you know, there's this is a remote area, so there's no like street view or anything like that, and it's kind of a blurry satellite picture. So I, I did Google, and I found one picture of, and it was close to this confluence of these two rivers. I did find one picture of a guy in the water, like bathing, and um, so I thought, oh, that's a warm water. So I, I took the name of the two rivers and I put them in Google together, and of course. Page after page was all forest fan, forest fan, forest fan. So, oh, well, apparently, you know, people have searched this area. So, you know, I I, I use the uh, the jelly bean method of averages. Uh, and, you know, I thought, okay, I'm going to document all these people that went to this area. And there was a lot. Uh, one thing I did notice, because uh, I just started this maybe less than a year ago, and one thing I did notice was all the people that have searched this area, you know, had done so five, six years ago. And I couldn't find any recent people who searched this area. So I thought that was interesting. And um, I'll, I read all the accounts and all the other people's reasonings for finding this. And um, so, uh, you know, if you leave this, there's a, there's a road that goes along there. And if you leave this where warm waters halt, because that would be where the warm river met the cold river is where warm waters halt. And follow this road down, it is kind of a canyon. And um, there's a like a park, it's not just a ranger station, but it's like a house where the ranger lives. And, you know, home of brown, a ranger wears brown, ranger homes are, 
you know, built to look rustic and they're brown and got logs on them. And of course, there's a big picture of uh, Smokey the Bear out front. He's brown. Uh, and then there's a parking lot and a trail. And so a lot of people, and that was a, like a mile or two from the river. So it's not far, but too far to walk. Um, and this is where I kept reading all these searches. But I, I went further out. And if you go out about another six or seven miles, there's another um, parking lot. And that's a trailhead. And I searched and searched and searched. Of course, like I said, there's no, uh, there's no street view. And I couldn't find pictures of this area. And, uh, and there's some very, very good trail sites. And I just love it. And you know, I saw maps of the trail. I saw difficulty ratings of the trail and stuff. But I couldn't find any actual pictures. So I don't, don't know this parking lot. You know, they put in below the home of Brown. But this is my reasoning for that. You're taking the canyon down, and if you pass the ranger station, you're if you're using the same terminology, you're taking the canyon down, you pass the ranger station, you're going down from the ranger station. So you're down below the home of Brown. And that was my reasoning that this next parking lot may have been the spot that that you pull in at, because it's below the home of Brown, which is up here, you know, six miles up the road. Um, down the canyon. So anyway, that was my reasoning for that. And I again, I googled and I found only just a couple people, you know, after searching this trail by the ranger station, had gone down and searched this other trail. Um, but you know, even though they searched, who knows how well they searched. And this was, like I said, this was years and years ago. So there weren't as much discussion I don't think back then well I don't know because I, I wasn't a searcher back then so there may have been just as much discussion as there is now but I think Forrest Fenn has talked about things more now and we have it cataloged and we have sites we can go to and literally search for keywords and um, so anyway I went to at work I was like I thought I got all this equipment I'm gonna make a map of the area and so what I chose was a piece of paper and a sharpie. <laughs> I drew a map and let me explain this map to you. This is the trail. This is really technical. This is the trail that comes from the parking lot and it comes, you know, this is backwards on here but I don't know if it'll be backwards when I actually show the video but yeah, maybe. But this is the trail that comes from the parking lot and there's a fork in the trail and one end goes here and it, and it crosses a creek at one end comes up and parallels the creek for a while and then goes back. And this is what, you know, when I looked at this, I didn't even notice this at first. It was like a couple weeks later and I took out, on Google Maps, you can measure distances. So I noticed that where this comes out and parallels the river, it's 200 feet from the river this whole way. And Forrest said, hey, there's been people 200 feet from the treasure. So if you walk up this trail and you're walking this way, you've walked within 200 feet of the treasure. Now, this trail here, I, I don't know, on the map, this trail was bigger than this trail. Um, so I'm thinking more people take this trail. And this trail here, when I measured from here to about a quarter of the way in, that's 500 feet. So we have two measurements that Fenn talked about. If you walked along this trail, you would have walked within 500 feet of the treasure. And if you walked along this trail, you would have walked within 200 feet of the treasure. So why do I think the treasure is right here? Because this creek is a dry creek bed. There's no water in it. And, you know, part of the poem says you're up the creek, you know, go up your creek without a paddle. I can't remember the exact words. I Usually I have the poem on in front of me when I do these videos. Um, but you don't need a paddle up this creek because there's no water in it. You're going to walk up it. And um, a dry creek bed is, it's going to have stones. It's going to have things. And from the satellite picture, I can't really tell anything. And of course, it's it's pine trees and everything in this area. And um, I'm just surprised no one's gone back and revisited this. Because this just makes so much sense to me. Because those were the two measurements he talks about. People have been within 500 feet of the treasure. And people have been within 200 feet of the treasure. And when I measured this, I thought, wow, 
500 feet from here and 200 feet from here, you can almost triangulate. The treasure is going to be right in here. So anyway, that's my logic. And like I said, um, when I read the book, there's one paragraph. I'm not even going to, like I said, I don't want to say where this is exactly, but there is one paragraph that like spelled out, hey, we went here and did this. And I was like, that's the area that I'm talking about here. Um, and then a friend of mine pointed out another page um, that had another clue that pointed to this area. And so between those two things, things Fens talked about, the way this is set up, other people have come to the same conclusion. Um, and I found out like there's like two hot spots and this is kind of like the third or fourth or fifth hot spot of where people have gone to look. So it's, it's a pretty popular spot. Um, so I, I kind of like this idea and that's why I think myself is just there waiting. And so, and I, I work in two week increments. So, um, this next my paydays are every two weeks so this next payday you know is my rent payday my bill payday and um the next payday i'm getting my car fixed because i have a broken strut so i'm basically driving on three wheels um when i went in to get an estimate the guy's like i don't even want to put this up on a lift because your tire will fall off <laughs> like oh that's good to know you know um luckily i only drive to and from work and um i live three blocks from the grocery store and so I don't drive this very much and when you do drive it, I mean I knew it was knocking I knew if you went over 50 miles an hour the tires just wobbled like crazy and um, I've been driving it like that for probably a year now so I'm just like Pff. so this so I got my rent payday the payday where I fix my car and then it's like I'm just biding my time till we can travel so that's 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 a like a four week increment there and um that's going to put me towards the end of May. And uh, I'm just hoping like in June or July we're allowed to travel. And I will go boots on the ground here. It's about, um, it's about, I think it said 18 hours for me, but 18 hours. I've driven 24, 28 hour uh, stretches. I've driven from, I well, one trip I took, um, it took me 30, well, it took me like 28 days and I visited every state west of the Mississippi. And um, so I've done stuff like that where I've slept in my car. And, you know, um, I, on the, out of those 28 days, I think there was three nights I spent in a hotel. And then, you know, I would shower at the, the Love's gas station. It always has a trucker shower. Um, but, yeah, I spent 28 days in a car touring all the states. And that was like me trying to find where I wanted to live and I settled on Denver and um the other states I've been through because my dad was a long haul truck driver and we lived in Michigan and he you know he drove stuff all over so every summer I would ride with him and between that and work and at the Air Force and just traveling I've been in the 48 states the 48 lower states I've not been to Alaska or Hawaii um but I've been all up and down the east coast uh, with my dad because he he would haul like from florida to new york and um from new york to chicago so i've been through i've been in every state i can't say i've been a tourist in every state but i've been at least through every state um so anyway that's my tell like i said this is uh this way <laughs> so this is like just too much for me to ignore it just it fits. It's below the home of Brown. It's a place where other people have searched. They just didn't go far enough. They, they stopped it. Oh, and let me tell you another thing about this. Um, if you take this back to the parking lot, it's about three quarters of a mile. So three quarters of a mile, um, it's not much of an elevation. It is uphill. It's uphill going to the river uh, or the dry, the dry bed. Um, so three quarters of a mile from the parking lot, I think that's something... Uh, a 79 year old man can do twice um, three quarters of a mile that's about as far as I go to the store and I do that at least once a week so um, so it just that's another thing that fits um, again I won't know until I go there 
what it's going to be like. And I think by sharing this, if you Google and you find uh, spots, um, you find spots where people have gone and and revisit those spots, you might figure out where I'm talking about. I'm not going to say what state it's in because uh, it might surprise you, uh, but it's all right there. And it's a place he talks about in the book. And um, there were some other things that fit. Uh, there is a uh, circular, well, I don't even talk about that, but there's a, there's a circular thing that looks like a wheel. And I know we joked about trying the wheel. And I still think, like, it's still in my head. And I, once I put it in my head, I had a hard time getting rid of it. Was that the blaze is going to be something to do with an eye. Because um, you're, the end is ever drawing eye. <laughs> drawing eye, but drawing eye. And then he talks about, as I have gone in there alone. And there's all these eyes in the poem. And I just think, he's hinting that the blaze is a big eye. <laughs> so... I know that I say that half jokingly, but I know that when I'm out in the weather and we go, where's this giant eye at? So anyway, that's my solve. And those were my giraffes. And uh, maybe next time I'll, I'll show you uh, some of my pin collection and stuff. Uh, but uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I need to get to bed because I just got home from work and I'm making this video before bed. Uh, so, yeah. Tell me what you think. If, the, if this makes sense, like I said, once I once I measured it, and that was 500 feet, and that was 200 feet. I thought those were the two. <laughs> it just makes sense. I don't know, but anyway, I'm gonna let you go, and I'm gonna I gotta stitch this video together and uh, go ahead and post it. Uh, my name is Randy Pischel. Look for my books on Amazon. Um, in case you missed it, there's a thing up there that has to do with the beacon. Oh, no, it's over here. The thing over here had to do with the beacon star. Um, maybe one day I'll give you a close-up of that. But uh, the characters in the beacon star are based on... Uh, I used to own a pottery shop with my brother. And um, <clears throat> we'd made, you know, mass pots for art shows and stuff. But then we, in my spare time, I would make all these little figurines and animals. And... Um, you know, I, that's where the idea of the guns came from, was they're really easy to make. You make a little pot, and that's the mouth, and you put eyes and legs and arms and on. And I've called it a gons, and um, I thought when I was writing this book, you know, I can include a gons now. And there's also uh, some of the other, there's a whole shelf up here of all these creatures I made, and I included a whole bunch of those in the book. So that was kind of, that was kind of fun. And um, But anyway, I'm going to let you go. Uh, books on books everywhere. Um, you can get it at Barnes and Noble. Um, I saw it on the Walmart website uh, just the other day because sometimes I look. <laughs> so it's everywhere. It's funny because my cat is hiding his face right now, so I think he's tired of me talking. So anyway, I'm gonna let you go, and I I hope uh, this helps some people or maybe gets some people excited or maybe someone's gonna steal it right out from under me, but. I, I'm picturing probably in eight weeks, if this is all over and the quarantine's lifted, I will be boots on the ground. And I just, that's a long time, so I don't know what I'm going to do to fill videos up between now and then. Uh, maybe I'll talk more about paranormal stuff. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of like the last thing I had to talk about, unless I give you the place names. But I'm not, like I said, I just, I'm too excited. And if I can, if I can swing it and the things are lifted, you know, after my car gets fixed, I'll be more comfortable going out on the highway. I might go, with, you know, the very next weekend or as soon as I can. As soon as I can after my car is fixed, I'm hitting the road. Um, so there's that. And anyway, signing off. Have a good day.